This is Dror Moshe Kasuto. Thank you so much. Thank you for for Thank you for bringing yourselves here. It's written, Shiv'im Panim La Torah. There are 70 faces, 70 ways of interpreting, of learning, understanding each word, each verse, each concept in the Torah. And we know that 70 names of the Creator have been given to Matat, to Chanoch. That Chanoch became Sar Hapanim, the minister of the face. He's in charge in heaven under one of his names that that name is Matat that we're not allowed to say the full name of that holy angel Matat and he is over there in heaven in charge on shining the face of heaven of the creator to the wide world now 70 Names means 70 faces, ways of presentation, been given to Hanoch, to that angel Matat, to go and shine the light of Hashem, the wisdom of the Creator, to the wide world. But it been given to him from the endless names of the Creator. Like, he received 70 names, and with those amazing 70 names, he's running the world for the Creator's divine will. But the real truth is that in the treasures of heaven there are no numbers to the amounts of faces and explanations and meanings of the Creator's will and to His wisdom. There is no end to it. Now, such a gift and a blessing been given to a human being. His name is Hanoch. Hanoch ben Yered, that he was a righteous man and he served Hashem, the Creator, all his life. He was a righteous man and he found it in his heart to go and to teach Torah and to wake up people in his days, in his generation and to call people to know the Creator, to learn his ways, to come closer to him. And after working like that in a very high level of, of dedication, and with a pure heart, he been called to heaven. And he was the first one to rise and to climb to heaven without dying. A holy chariot with a horse made of fire came down one day to earth from heaven. All of the students of Hanoch saw that flaming horse coming down. And just Hanoch jumped on the back of the horse. And for one week he was riding and his students went after him, walking after him. It's all written in the book that calls Sefer HaYashar, Ancient Midrashim. And in the seventh day, Hanoch, with his holy horse, went straight to heaven. And when Hanoch came to heaven, so he been appointed by the Creator to become an angel, to serve, not in a flesh and bone body, just in a spiritual body, as an angel, to receive 70 of the holy names of the Creator, and to go and to lead the world. And he, Hanoch, Matat, Sar Hapanim, the minister of faces of heaven, he is the Mishnah Dosha, he reveals the Mishnayot, the six Darim of Mishnayot, and he is the one that taught wisdom and knowledge to the righteous ones, to the Tanaim, to the Amoraim. Matat, Sarapanim, it's a holy name that we're not allowed even to mention. That's his name. He's being called in those 70 names of, that have been given to him by the Creator. Names that belong to, to, the, to Hashem. 
but there are many, many other faces that are waiting for you and for me and for every person that will dedicate his life to the truth and to nullify himself to the Creator's will to become one with Him. And He will inherit the godly gift that is waiting for each and every one of us. And it's to become one with Hashem Himself. Hashem doesn't want to give a reward only to Moses, only to Abraham, only to those chosen righteous ones. The blessing is here and open to all. Like that it's written in Mesilat Yesharim and in many other books. That the Creator is willing to give Himself to His beloved ones. Now who are those beloved ones? There are so many verses that are explaining with who the Creator chose to be. So you have the holy nation of Israel. Great. Who are they? It's an amazing question. Because today, like we Jewish people, very easily claiming to be Am Yisrael. Like, all right, great, we're for sure in, great. But, okay, what with all the rest of Am Yisrael? What with all the ten tribes of Am Yisrael that are lost in the exile? They're also Am Yisrael, right? Now, you don't know if they are still Am Yisrael over there or not. They're not Jewish, but in reality, they were never Jewish. Because they're not from the tribe of Judah, of Judah. They're not Jewish because they've never been Jewish. They're not supposed to be Jewish. They're Issachar, they're Zvulun, they're Naftali, they're God, Asher, Shimon, Levi. They're not supposed to be Jewish. Now, if today they want to join the Judaism, the Jewish nation, the Jewish people, one or two tribes out of twelve, they need to convert to Judaism. So great, they're not converts, they're not Jewish. But they might stay in the same form of being themselves in their tribe became a certain nation over there and they are married between themselves and they are still Yisachal. They might be still until today Zvulun because millions of people over there can be from that lost tribe of Asher, God, or Naftali and they're getting married between themselves for years and years and years and you can't recognize them today to say, oh, I recognize him as Naftali. No, for you today he's a Pakistanian guy. He's a, he's a, I don't know, like, who, who is he? Like, he can, it, it can be a, 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 a tribe of only 20 million people on, on, the, on the mountains of, of, of Asia connecting to, to Russia like in the like in, in in the in the valley closer to China, like only twenty people that are like just you can't recognize. Okay, but they are tribes of Israel, and when the spirit of Mashiach will come, will wake up all the souls of Israel. Suddenly, you're going to see those warriors. Suddenly, you're going to recognize the godliness that is installed, that is treasured inside of them, and they're fighters. They are warriors. They are holy tribes of Israel. Today you can't recognize them, but they are there. Now, except of them, what happened to the children of Moses? When Moses decided to continue with Am Israel toward Eretz Israel, and he took them 40 years to go in circles in the desert of Sinai, so Tzipora, the wife of Moses, took her children, Gershom and Eliezer, welcome, and went with them back to the camp of Jethro, her father. And they did not inherit the Holy Land of Israel, Eretz Canaan, with the twelve tribes of Israel. They did not. And we know that Moses has been blessed by Hashem that his children will become millions of millions of people. Now the blessing for sure took place. And where are the children of Moses? We don't know. They never came into the Holy Land of Israel. They stayed in Midian, they stayed over there with the, with the father-in-law, with Jethro. They're not part of the nation of Israel, even not part of the twelve lost tribes, ten lost tribes. They are somewhere else. So you're talking about a blessed nation of hundreds of millions of people that are the children of Moses, like, open your ears, like, wake up to reality. All those gigantic amounts of millions, of hundreds of millions of people 
are about to join our tribe one day and to become one unit. Again, back. Now, there are rules, there are halachot, there are ways of conversions, all those things are needed. Many courthouses are about to be open, like many huge great things, amazing changes are about to take place. Great, everything is great. But just to face reality, we today supposed to come out of our shell, out of our hidden place, and to understand that if we are really willing to accept the face of Mashiach, we must recognize reality. We must connect ourselves to all those ones that have been blessed by Hashem. All of our siblings, even if we're not allowed to marry them because we're Jewish and they're not, I don't think that they were marrying the, between the tribes, even back then, thousands of years ago. I don't know. I'm not sure. But I'm not so sure that from the tribe of Yehuda would jump to get married with the tribe of Zvulun. Because if they would, so here you cancel the tribes. What, what you need tribes for. If you gave a certain area to that tribe, it's for a purpose. That they will keep themselves inside of themselves with their unique gifts and blessings and knowledge and Nusach of Tefillah, a way of praying and all those things. And get married between themselves. So there is no issue to get married with them anyway, because they can and should protect themselves as a tribe, and we should protect ourselves as a tribe, and everything is perfect, even if they stay Zvulun. We don't need to run and convert everyone to make things right. Everything is perfect as it is. Now, except of those 12 tribes, and except of that amazing nation of the children of Moses, you know that after that Sarai Menu, Sarah, our mother, passed away, so Abraham took back Keturah, that's Hagar. Rashi is telling us that that's Hagar. And from Hagar, he brought down out to the world more children, and he blessed them all, and gave them gifts and blessings. And the promise of the Creator to Abraham was that all the families on earth are going to be blessed by him. Means that in every family in the wide world, every family, that was the blessing of heaven. For sure a blessing that is taking place right now. Blessings of Hashem for sure are happening in reality. And Hashem said to Abram, by you, by your merit, by your privilege, by your blessing, will be blessed all the families around the world. So now there's, there are sparks families of children of Abram around the world, the children of Hagar, of Ktua, that they're named Benash Fachot, and they are out there, again, somewhere, and you can't recognize them, they might be Chinese, they might be from Taiwan, they might be from Japan, like, like everyone. Dadan and Midian and Ashur and like nations that started their progress of, of development, of growth, 3,500 years ago, or maybe 4,000 years ago. There, then, they started. And he blessed them and he sent them out to the world and we don't know who are they, but they've been blessed by their father that is our father as well. So again, you don't need to go and marry them. Relax. You don't need to go and drink wine with them. No, everything is cool. You don't need to eat from their shita. No, everything is cool. Cool. <laughs> Stay Jewish. <laughs> Do your job. Everything. No one is asking you to change. But open your mind and reconnect yourself to reality. Today, we're isolated. Oh, what's going on? We're Jewish. Everyone around us, tiny state, here and over there. And what are we going to do? Relax. You still don't see the godly plan. The godly plan is much, much greater, much, much wider than what we can imagine. In one moment, the reality will change. And suddenly all those ones that you think today that they are your enemies are going to stand with you on one side. And everyone will support your purpose, and you will understand theirs. And suddenly you're going to realize what was going on here for thousands of years. 
that you thought to yourself that you were isolated. Everyone was isolated. They were isolated in China. They were isolated in Russia. They were isolated in Hungary, in Europe. Everyone was isolated somewhere else. Everyone went through their story and we went through ours. But in the end of days, when the Creator will reveal His godliness, when He will remove the curtain, suddenly we're going to see, like that enemy is not your enemy. He's your cousin. He's your real cousin. Means that He will fight with you in your wars against the real enemies that are those real evil people that walks on earth. Now, you have millions of people that you know today, thousands of people around you that are not Jewish, and are nice people, like okay people, like with emotions, like they care, they like they love their children, like worried people, like okay people, fine people. Who are they? They're not your enemies. Even if they are not Jewish, they're not your enemies. They can be your best friends. Now, there is a lot of politics, there are a lot of opinions, a lot of distractions, a lot of thoughts, a lot of evil inclination that creates separation between families, between individuals, between nations, between groups, between communities. There is a lot of Yetzer Ara today walks between us and creating those walls of separation. But it's only a dark spirit that is separating. In one moment, when all that darkness will be removed from the world, in one moment suddenly you're going to see pillars of light shining, you're going to see lighthouses illuminating the world with light of faith, with simplicity. Innocent people, nice good people, and then you're going to recognize the real sparks that are treasured inside everyone. Inside huge nations, you're suddenly going to see grace in them, you're suddenly going to see beauty in them. You're going to recognize wisdom, life experience, talents, many blessings. That they've been blessed from heaven thousands of years ago by the merit of Abraham. There is something very, very deep in that. There is something very, very also challenging in that. The main thing is to recognize what that is blocking you and connecting you to your evil inclination that is creating and bringing that separation and to reject yourself from that to cut yourself from your evil inclination from your yetzer and to try to reconnect yourself to the divine will to the real purpose for it you've been created to try to recognize who you are and what's your mission and to understand by that what is the mission and the divine will of heaven from all of us together as group. And we need to wake ourselves. We need to open our eyes and to try to work on ourselves to see, okay, I am Jewish, I am observant, I am keeping Torah mitzvot, but can I do it out of love instead of doing it out of pressure? Can I do it out of my good will to serve and to commit myself to the obligations, to the Torah, to the mitzvot? Or that I must be terrorized and always scared and afraid? Thousands of people around the world are walking terrified in horrific anxiety, don't know what to do with themselves, lost. And they will claim to know the path and they will preach and teach and guide and force and abuse others to do what they want them to do. But they themselves, in front of the mirror, are terrified children, lost their ways, don't know what to do with their lives, don't know how to take responsibility. It starts with your own decision to confront your own fears. You cannot help another person in issues that you haven't solved, solved yet between you to yourself. If you're still scared of a certain issue, you cannot go and teach that topic to other people. They won't buy it from you. They won't take it from you. You're not qualified to help them. You don't really know how to help them because you still haven't learned it from yourself. A real wise person earns, gains his wisdom from his life experience. Like the verse is saying, En chacham ke ba'al nisayon. The wisdom is something you buy with your life experience. If you realize that this method does not work, so you know to help other people not to fall in that trap. Because you saw it. How you saw it? When you fell on your face over and over again and again and again, 
it been clarified to you completely with no doubt anymore that it doesn't work, it doesn't bring me to happiness, it doesn't bring me to completion, it doesn't bring joy to my life. Now I know, after I failed, after I tasted it, after I tried it, when you will stand in front of yourself and you're going to fight with yourselves not to be afraid of your own fears and to cut them away from you and to be brave and to choose. And you don't need to change. You need to reveal and to uncover your true self, your true potential. To come back to those treasures that you've been blessed with by the Creator. You don't need to change. I found myself a few years ago that I made some very drastic changes in my life. I changed my house location. We lived in a Jerusalem ghetto, Bet Israel, 100% Orthodox from very radical area. And we moved to a different mixed neighborhood named Rechavia in Jerusalem. A mixed neighborhood with Batei Knesset, with Mikvaot, with everything you need. Also, it's Israel, so it's not like you're stuck between the nations. It's everything is fine. You're, we were over there. But the change of moving from one very strict Haredi, Orthodox community to a mixed neighborhood brought a lot of doubts, many fears to my mind. But I knew, I felt that I am doing the right thing by taking myself out of an area that I didn't felt belonged to that area anymore. And that change was very needed for my family as an individual, as a family. We had, as parents, to take responsibility on our children, and we came to the right conclusion and moved. But as we moved, many, many fears started to attack us. Maybe you're going off the derech. Maybe you're doing something wrong. Maybe soon you're going to lose it. Maybe you're going to lose the connection to your rabbi. You're going to lose the connection to the community. Maybe the blessing won't be the same blessing. Many thoughts, like waves in the sea, washing and washing and washing and washing and terrorizing me. And I felt that I'm losing it. I start to feel that maybe here is that curse that I was hoping for. <laughs> that exactly what I was so scared of. Here it's attacking me. I'm getting crazy. I'm losing my mind. I don't know what to do. The pressure is attacking me. But in reality, it was only the power of imagination that was terrifying me. That was fighting with me to push me off the cliff. When in reality, I did not make one tiny mistake by changing my location. It was the best choice I, as an individual, made in my life for me, for my wife, for our children. It was the best thing that happened to us. Why? Because we really listened to our own inner voice. And because of being adult and responsible to the life of ourselves and of our children, we took that decision and we changed location. And it was the right decision. But because we were not 100% strong and stable and powerful, there was still a place for the Yetzirah, for that snake to whisper and to terrorize us, and to make us scared and afraid, and it was growing, and it was surrounding us. But the blessing was that I decided to take myself again in the same ancient method that worked for me for years, back to Hashem, to go and talk about my issues with Hashem. And then every night I would go out of the house and I would do long hours of Hidbodadut. And I spent thousands of hours, and I'm not exaggerating and for sure not lying, thousands of hours of Hidbodadut talking to Hashem, an individual prayer, a simple prayer, with my language, using my own mouth, explaining my own emotions, feelings, asking for help and guidance from heaven, asking for salvation, solutions for our life problems. Every day and every night I would go to spend hours with Hashem. And then it hit me. 
that something very wrong is going on with me in my life. What was that very wrong, twisted thing happened with me in my life? That when I'm choosing to do the right thing, I start feel bad with myself. And how can it be? I choose to go to a warm place and I feel chill. I feel cold. I choose to go to the left and I feel that I'm on the right side. I feel that I should go to the right. I go to the light and I feel darkness. The opposite is taking place in my life when I go to the opposite from it. How can it be? And then I realized that it's written that kol hagadol mechavero yitzro gadol mimeno as much as you working hard to purify yourself and to grow so your evil inclination is growing with you when you're getting stronger he's getting stronger with you when you kill him his elder brother is coming to fight with you when you reveal your strength your power he takes off his sleeves and stands like that. Why? Because you went higher. Because you reached higher levels. So you need an enemy to create balance in the creation of the Creator that he, from some reason, a godly reason, loves balance. He likes it. He wants balance in the world. Now, me as an individual, realize that all those foreign thoughts that were attacking me, hey, you're losing it, you're falling off the way, you're losing your Judaism, you're losing your religion, you're losing your connection, you're losing the truth, you're gonna fall, you're gonna fail, you're gonna crash. All those fears were only the invention of the evil inclination, were all lies. Because really, in reality, I just took the right decisions to find a way how to connect myself in a stronger way on my own without the support of other people because that I realized something in my Avodat Hashem those things that been clarified to me were the result of an effort of many years of me dedicating my life to seek to find the truth and when finally I found some truth about myself, not about you, about myself as an individual, that it was a better place for my family to live in than in Bet Israel. When I took that decision, my Yetzirah went crazy. And what was his method? What was his way to doubt me, to make me doubt myself? To tell me that I am wrong, that here you lost it, that you don't have a choice, that you don't have a chance, that you're not going to make it, that now you lost it for life. He was sabotaging my self-esteem. He was working hard to break my happiness, my ability to recognize my life's success, and he tried to create a fake reality of destruction. Of failure when in reality I went just stronger today I'm much stronger than I was seven years ago much much stronger why because I went with my heart because I follow the inner voice of Hashem that was talking to me from within like Lecha, the verse is saying Lecha, amar libi. to you your heart is saying Bakshu panay tamid. ask for my face always Hashem is using your heart as a speaker, to tell you 24-7, look for my face always. Which face? Which face? The face that are shining through you. You have an inner face. You are facing Hashem. When you're looking deep inside, you're facing Hashem. When you go to accept the face of that righteous man that came to town, I went once to the mikveh. And someone asked me, what's the time? I answered to him. So I, I told him, four o'clock. He told me, are you a student of Rav Arush? I told him, why are you asking? He said, when you said four o'clock, I heard in your voice. I said four. I said Arba. I said Arba. That's what I said, four. He heard 12 years ago that I was learning in Rav Arush Yeshiva in Jerusalem. He heard it in the voice. I said Arba. What's the what, Arba? How can you say Arba? How can you say he heard? How can he heard? Because I accepted something from his face. 
Because when I learned from him, I took something when I heard. When you go and search for Hashem, you're receiving the face of Hashem. When Moses went up to receive the Torah and he came down with the holy tablets, his face was shining in the way that people couldn't look at him, couldn't stare. Why? Because of the godly light of heaven, the light of Shina that was hovering upon him. It was the face of heaven that was shining from Moses' face. When you wash your hands in the water, your hands first are wet and after it they are pure. When you're washing your face with the face of heaven, when always you're looking for the face of Hashem, in every situation, a police officer stopped you, your wife is screaming at you, the bank called you, your partner is demanding something, and you are looking for Hashem's face in that situation, you will receive the face of Hashem. The face of Hashem will shine upon you to a place that you will shine upon all your beloved ones. Because in every situation you will save a spark, you will bring out a spark of heaven, one aspect of one face, of one wisdom, one pearl of wisdom, of knowledge, of power, of understanding, of greatness of our beloved Creator, and it will attach to you. And it's completing you, and it's building you, and it's becoming you. Now when you are doubting yourself, you are looking on foreign faces. Someone called me yesterday and he asked me, how I'm going to do if to make vaccines, to give vaccines to my children or not? A great question. A great question. How do you know? How would you know? Millions of people are claiming that if you don't give vaccines, you're crazy. On the other side, millions of people, not less wise, are saying that if you're giving vaccines to your children, you're killing your children. No. Later. You can, but later. Thank you. How do you know? How do you know? Your wife is screaming, vaccines. Your inner voice is screaming, no way, I'm not doing it. How are you going to know? How are you going to know what Hashem's will about vaccines? Where is it written? How can I find it? Which Midrash is talking about vaccines? Which Midrash is talking about the companies that are producing the vaccines and all their plans and all the government's plans? Where are those Midrashim? I want to see them. I want to put my hands. I want to talk to the rabbi that knows the whole truth about vaccines. I want to receive the answer from him. Okay, I'll go to him. He'll say, hell no. I'll go to him. He'll say, yes, you must. What I'm going to do now, both of them are righteous, both of them are pure, both of them are knowledgeable, both of them met thousands of people, they have students that are doctors. How am I going to know? You cannot know. Don't think that you can know. You cannot know. The Creator works in mysterious ways and for a reason and for a purpose. You don't know. You have two options, to rent this house or to rent that house. How in the world are you going to know? This costs a little bit more, this is a little bit nicer. Here you know the neighbors, here you know that there are lower taxes. How are you going to know? Amazing two job opportunities. How are you going to know? Learning another couple of hours or dedicating more time to work. How are you going to know? This children kindergarten or that one? How are you going to know? You don't know. There's no way in the world to know. You cannot know. You cannot know because the Creator Himself decided that you will not know. So He blocked your eyes and you cannot tell. How are you going to work? What should I do? How am I going to choose? The Creator commanded you to choose life. How am I going to define? This looks like life. This looks like life. This looks like death. This looks like death. How am I going to choose? It's not like I'm choosing bad things. It's not like I know for sure and I'm dropping it. No! I'm confused. I don't know. I don't know if to the right or to the left. How am I going to choose? Can it be that the Creator didn't give us the key, didn't give us the solution for that problem? For sure not. What's the solution? If I cannot ask Urim Betumim, if I cannot ask Hashem, if I don't have someone with Ruach HaKodesh to answer all my questions right now, how can I know? What do I know? I know that Hashem he told us 
that we must be truthful, right? That's agree for all. I know that Hashem told us that we must be kind. We know that, for sure. I know that Hashem told us that we should have patience to our beloved ones. I know that Hashem gave us some guidings, that based on those guidings, He told us and promised that He will be with the righteous ones, that He will be with the pure ones in their hearts, that He will be with the sincere, that He will be with the humble, that He will be with those ones that will love, that will care, that will appreciate. He will be in one side to protect and to defend His people. Who are those people? Those that are dedicating their lives to Him, right? That we know. So I know now, after all this long explanation, that if I will work on myself to be the best person I can, no matter what, which way I will choose, He will be there for me, to guide me and to protect me from mistakes. And it might be that for me, it's the right thing to take my kids to make vaccines, and it will heal and protect my children because of certain reasons that are hidden from our eyes, but maybe for you, the opposite decision is the right one. How are you going to know? If you're going to know about yourself, that you are asking for Hashem, that you are trying to find the real solution, a solution that is coming out of labor, out of work, out of effort, out of dedication, after search after the truth, you should count and have trust on heaven to be by your side no matter which direction you will choose to walk to. Because the Creator will walk with you and will bless you in your work, in your fields, to succeed financially and in relationship with your beloved ones and to raise your, raise your children to the right path and to succeed in everything you do and will bless your health and your life and will lengthen your life and will bless you in every possible way. Why? Because you chose Him. Now in an argument in the house that the wife is saying yes vaccines and you're saying no vaccines, that you say I need to learn and she says no you can't, you must work. In those arguments, how are you going to bring Hashem to be between you? How are you going to bring Hashem to help you to recover your own mind to know how to choose right? Only by working on your midot, avodata midot, working on your attributes, fixing yourself first, kshot atzmecha tchila, bringing yourself to the truth, forcing yourself to be truthful. When there's an argument, ask yourself, why am I arguing? What is the real purpose of my argument? Why am I fighting? Is it because I really know better or that I just want to get rid of that <coughs> argument? Am I arguing because I feel something right or because that I don't have the power to argue anymore? Maybe I choose because I'm lazy. Maybe I'm choosing because I'm scared. Maybe I don't want to confront my fears. Maybe I don't want to be pushed. Those negative reasons, those bad and negative and foreign mm, 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 Motives to take decisions will not bring you to a success even if you will choose in the end of them to learn Torah and to put filin and to keep Shabbat because you're going to find yourself learning Torah and not understanding anything, putting filin and not feeling no connection by that, keeping Shabbat alone and separated from your beloved ones. What's the use? Where's the satisfaction? Where's the joy? Where's the reward? Where is the gain? Where is the blessing of heaven in keeping Shabbat and learning Torah and putting tefillin? That's not the blessing of heaven. The blessing of heaven is that a person will be the nicest person he can be, the most truthful person he can be, to check your motives, to ask yourself deep questions. Why am I doing it? What actually am I doing? Why am I fighting on that? Do I know for sure that I'm right? Maybe I'm taking those decisions because I don't want to deal no more. Maybe I'd rather to control and to fight and to scream one time and to remove this, that argument from my table forever. Maybe I'm choosing wrong because when you choose wrong, 
you're bringing troubles to your life. You're rejecting the blessing and the light of heaven. But when you choose right, when you choose to be righteous, when you choose to be truthful, and you choose to listen to the voice of truth, how you listen to the voice of truth? When someone rebukes you, when someone argues with you, when someone fights with you, when someone is not accepting your words, you in your heart can tell if he is right or you are right. You know about yourself, you have inner senses, you can feel the truth about this conversation, about that argument, about that situation. You can tell if when she is rebuking you, she is right or she is wrong. If you failed and messed up, you weren't truthful, you were not honest, or that you were. You know that about yourself. The Gemara is telling us that a person will never be rebuked on something that he was not involved with, involved in, in some way, in some aspect. The Creator is arguing with you and fighting with you and rebuking you because He still has hope for you to wake up and to make changes in your life. To take responsibility and to become a better person. A closer person to the truth is a closer person to God, is a closer person to the blessings of heaven. A person that is learning and learning and learning and in the end of the day does not understand anything from his learning. The learning does not bring him to real humility. He is not listening and learning from everyone. He is not able to have patience and to care and to listen and to hear the voice and the opinions of his wife. And he is judging and criticizing everyone and blocking everyone's mouths with jokes and with criticism. And he ignores everyone and running and speeding in his own path. This is a silly person. This is a very separated and dark person that cannot see the light of the faces, multi-faces of heaven that are shining to us from every face, from every person, from every situation. All the creation is outfits and coverings of the Creator Himself. His honor and His respect is that He is covered with those layers that are filtering, that are presenting His light in a certain color, in a certain shade, in a certain voice, in a certain tone, that will be good for you to receive for you to be able to handle with. Sometimes you don't move until someone screams at you and it's the truth and you need to be screamed at. And I'm talking from my life experience because 12 hours ago my wife told me that sentence in the kitchen and she was right. Because there are situations that I'm paralyzed and I'm not moving if she's not screaming. And unfortunately, unfortunately, she needs to find herself screaming at me that I'll wake up. But at least that I will admit, at least that I will be honest to say you are right and will accept that rebuke and will listen to those high voices that sometimes you don't want to hear, but they're coming for a reason. A person is not just screaming at you for no reason. A person that gave up on talking calmly and quietly chose to scream like you, that you choose to scream sometimes. Ask yourself, why am I screaming? I scream when I feel that no one listens to me. That's when I scream. So why when she's screaming, she's screaming because she's crazy? No, she's not screaming because she's crazy. She's screaming because she feels that no one listens to her. Ask yourself, am I listening? Am I trying to hear? Or that I just want to get rid of that argument and I just don't have more power to listen to those words. And I want to choose and I want to take those decisions and leave me alone and acting crazy. And you're being lazy. And you're falling off the derech. You're falling away, drifting away from the truth by choosing your laziness to be your path. Choosing lies and excuses and justifying yourself all your way as a method for life instead of choosing the truth and responsibility and honesty as the blocks of your way, as the main path of your life.
And a person that will choose the truth with no end will connect himself to infinity. He will live eternal life in this world and he will enjoy the blessing of heaven in every situation. Even when he is falling, he will see the light of heaven. He will recognize the godly supervision on his life when he's climbing and when he's going down, when he's turning to the right and when he's turning to the left. You cannot know what Hashem wants from you in a situation. You can know who Hashem wants you to be in that situation. And in that situation, if you will choose to be who He expects you to be, who He wants you to be, who He hopes you to be, you can be sure, it's a guarantee, that He will be by your side to bless you in that path that you will choose to walk. Because you can say to Hashem today, I decided not to learn and I'm doing it only for you. And all that day will be dedicated for heaven because you need to take your children and to take responsibility on the fact that you are a parent. And you need to do it for heaven. And sometimes you need to take hard decisions in life. And there's no rabbi in the world that can guide you. And there's no teacher and there's no book that will give you the specific guidance that is needed for you in that situation. There are three ways to be redeemed. When Am Yisrael are standing in front of the Red Sea, there are three reasons for their salvation, for the sea to be open to twelve lanes. One is by the merit of Moses. The righteous man that is alive, and he is the rabbi of that generation. That it's written, Bokeh ayam lifne Moshe. Hashem opened to see the sea for Moses. Second option to be redeemed is by that righteous noble man that passed away generations ago. That's Yosef. That it's written, Hayam ra'avayanos. The sea saw the bed of Yosef, the righteous man lying over there, and ran away from him and opened itself for jo Yosef to go in dry land because of the merit of Yosef. There was a third partner in the redemption. His name was Mechavod. Mechavod. Do you know the name? What was his name? No. Nachshon ben Aminadav. Nachshon ben Aminadav was a person from the tribe of Yehuda that jumped into the water. And Nachshon ben Aminadav was that one that had the greatest merit of all those redeemers. Why? Because when Moses was standing in prayer, Hashem told Moses, Why are you calling me? Tell Am Yisrael to go already. That was exactly what the Nachshon ben Aminadav was doing. He jumped into the Red Sea with his sneakers, with his phone, with his backpack, with his jacket. He was holding his iPhone like that in the air not to water it. He went in only when water covered his mouth and he started choking. Then the sea started to open. He sacrificed himself without knowing where Moses is holding, without knowing what's the balance with the bed of Yosef, what's going on, if there's enough merit in the side of Yosef, or maybe there isn't. He didn't know anything. He just ran into the water. And the sea being open for him as well. Sometimes you can call your life rabbi that will give you advice. Sometimes you can go to the grave of the righteous one and to beg for mercy and you will see a salvation by his merit. And sometimes it's five minutes before Shabbat and your wife, she is crazy <laughs> and there's no one to call. And there's no grave to pray for salvation. <laughs> and you can only take your own decision and to jump into the water. And she's asking, can I use this pot for Shabbat? Should I put another thing above the fire to separate or not? Sometimes you don't know the halacha. Sometimes you don't know if that bowl is fleshic, is meat, or if it's dairy, if it's not. You don't know. Sometimes you don't know the halakha. There's no rabbi to call. You're screaming and you're not being answered. You need to take a decision. 
In that moment, if you will start fighting with her and telling her, how in the world can I know? I don't know. Hashem can punish you like that He punished Jacob. When Rachel came to Jacob and asked him for children, and he told her, can I bring children? Am I instead of God? Go pray to heaven. What do you want from me? He'd been punished on that. When Rivka came to ask from Isaac to pray, from Yitzchak to pray for him, he told her, let's go and pray together. And he'd been blessed and not punished. He was rewarded on that prayer. Because you need to take a decision five minutes before Shabbat. And even if you don't know the rule, you must take a decision. And you might be wrong. But you know what? Et la sot la shem, eferu toratecha. There are some situations that for Hashem's sake, for peace, for the right cause, you need to break some rules. And you need to take those decisions on your own. You need to take responsibility on the fact that you are a parent, on the fact that you are a husband, on the fact that you're an adult, on the fact that you need to supply money to support your house, to pay your bills, you need to be that person. And no one in the world can save you from that responsibility because it's God's will that you will be who He sent you to be. And you should be brave enough to be who you are and to admit in your mistakes and to be brave enough to choose and to try and to dare and not to fall and to drown in your sadness and in your low self-esteem. If you're a man, you need to be a man. If you're a woman, you should be a woman. If you're a person, you should be a person. No matter who you are, you have a role and you have a job and you have a responsibility. And you should play that role. And you should be who you've been sent to be. And for that, you need to be truthful. You need to be loyal. You need to allow yourself to be who you really are to share your thoughts, to allow yourself to be sensitive, to be patient and to listen to other people's opinion, especially people that care also about your children, people that loves you, people that thinks about your future, not people that claims to think about your people, or about your future, real people that care about your future, to listen to them, to negotiate, to talk, to reveal those qualities that have been given to you as a blessing by the merit of our ancestors, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Thank you. May Hashem bless us all together as one to see only blessings in our lives. Amen. Can you hear that song? Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.